In this video we're going to take a look at the 3D capabilities of CAM 350. If I were to import intelligent data, and by intelligent I mean data that has component information, I can get a full 3D representation of the design. So my choices are ODB++, PADS ASCII, IPC 2581, uh, even GenCAD can bring in component information. Well, let's start off with some IPC 2581. We'll go ahead and load that up. We'll go to the 3D tab. We'll let it build the model here. Now, it is building the model. If you're familiar with something called step models, that's not what we're doing here. We're just basically taking the information that is in the uh, ODB++ or IPC 2581, as you can see across the bottom here, it has height information, it has component outlines, and we use that to build the 3D representation. And then there's a whole bunch of viewing options across the top here. One I like to do is turn my dielectric off, uh, maybe view the front of the design, and then just spread some layers apart. You can also peel layers off if you want to do it that way. And then you can modify your look and fill here um, and turn things off, on and off like components. Uh, if you didn't have height information you can actually uh, enter that if you wanted to so you can just see some of that information uh, when you're looking at the components. But a lot of tools here to help you and then one last one I should point out is you can actually export a 3D PDF. Now this is an uh, option in CAM 350 but uh, if you do that, what happens is you go into Adobe, you can now manipulate the design just as I'm doing here inside a third-party tool uh, like Acrobat. So that's how you work with intelligent data, but what if all you have is Gerber and NC data? Well, we're going to walk through the loading, and this is the standard loading process that all Gerber and NC should go through. You point towards the directory, uh, if you have the capability to, uh, to use templates to identify your layers, in this case, this is my file names, which matches what came out of this particular CAD system, so that uh, when I hit Next, it's able to identify my layers for me, which is key to putting the layers in the correct order and identifying them correctly as to type. If you aren't able to use those templates, then just go in here and modify your layer type so that you do have at least your copper layers, solder mask, silk screen, if you want all that to show in your 3D view. I'll hit next one more time. It's actually put the layers in the correct order as you can see. I'm going to turn my layer labels on because what I have down here is some partial drills. I have a drill that only goes from layers 1 to 3. I have another one that goes from 3 to 4 and another one that goes from four to six. So I can actually use this to create a better view both in the 2D and 3D sense. I'll hit finish here and it'll prompt me to extract a netlist. Then it'll understand that those drills only go through certain layers. And if you were to run analysis, then, of course, you're not getting false failures for things that uh, are on a layer below the drill actually goes through. Now, one last step, and this is not a requirement. The, the only difference will be that your solder mask will extend beyond the board extents. And the reason for that is we invert the solder mask in the 3D view. So we really need to know the board extents. So what I'm going to do is take this layer that has a drawn board outline and I'm going to actually make it a true board outline. Uh, this is something that is in PADS ASCII, ODB++, IPC 2581 already, so you don't have to do it with those data formats. But I'm just going to use this Draw to Board Outline, select this, right-click to confirm, and say OK. And it actually puts that uh, little line there in the center so that now we know we've defined the exact board outline. Turning all my layers back on, and I'll go into 3D. And just like we did with the intelligent data, it's now going to build up a 3D representation of the Gerber and NC. 
Once that's done, we can start manipulating just as we did before. I'm going to turn my dielectric off. I'm going to view the uh, front and I'm going to start spreading layers apart. And as you can see, we can see partial drills and so forth in the design just by doing that. A full set of tools for visualizing and moving around your 3D design. And again, the, the option for the uh, 3D PDF export. So this is how you can work with 3D in CAM 350.